Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, went down the main street toward the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters. As he was about to go in, a man... Yes, I'm Sergeant Preston. I've been waiting here for you. I recognize you because of the dog. I'm Jim Belden. Jim Belden? I trailed you from Whitehorse. I thought you would, sir. I want to talk to you about what happened, if you'll listen. You mean you want to give yourself up? It isn't that. I didn't kill anyone. Wells was already dead when I went to his room. Then why'd you run away? I came here to find someone. Someone I thought would clear me, why'd but... Why'd you go to Wells' room at the hotel? To warn him. And to prevent him from being murdered. I see. Who did you expect was going to try to kill Wells? I... I'd rather not t- tell you the whole story. I know he'll clear me. But you won't have a chance to find him now, Belden. I'll have to take you into custody. No, please, give me a chance. I won't try to get away. I swear I won't. Tell me, Jim, who else besides Mamie Grant knew you went on that so-called business trip to Whitehorse? No one. Uh, that is only the person I want to find. In other words, Jim, you expect if you find that person that he'll confess and clear you. Well, yes. Jim, it... that doesn't make sense. Wells was murdered because he carried a small fortune in gold, and you say the man who killed him will give up that gold and confess just to clear you. He'd have to be a mighty close friend of yours to do a thing like that. Oh, Wells wasn't killed for his gold at all, Sergeant. That's just it. You see, Wells was a murderer himself. That killing was for revenge. You're wrong, Jim. I've known Wells for many years. He never wronged anyone. Who told you he was a murderer? I... I can't tell you that now. Never mind. Keep your secret, Jim. I have my own idea about it anyway. Who didn't kill Joe Wells? After hearing what Jim Belden had to say, Preston took him to a cabin where the sergeant and King stayed when in Dawson City. Leaving King with Jim, Sergeant Preston went back to the cafe for another talk with Mamie Grant. Luckily, he found Mamie sitting alone at one of the tables. I thought you'd be interested to know that I found Jim Belden. You you mean Jim didn't leave Dawson? No, no. In fact, I didn't have to search for him. He came to me. The story's rather a strange one. He's a fool. If he thinks anyone would believe that story, he's crazy. What story? Why, the, the one he told you. That is, trying to put the blame on someone else. When I talked to you before, Miss Grant, you pretended not to know what had happened. I, I was stalling for time, that's all, to help Jim. But since he went to you and told you that Jim story... told me practically nothing except that he's not guilty. He's very foolishly covering up for someone, and I thought perhaps you might know who it is. How should I know? After all, Jim and I were going together, but now, well, personally, I think I've been mistaken about him. Oh? In what way? Well, he's accused of murder, and I'm inclined to believe he did it. He wanted money quickly, hoping I might marry him then. My advice is to disregard whatever he tells you and go... What you advise, Miss Grant? I left Jim waiting at my cabin... There's something with him that will definitely prove who the killer is. You you mean Jim Belden found something in Wells' hotel room that was left by by the one he says got there first and killed Wells? I've said too much already so you can believe what you like. I'm (laughs) due at headquarters for a meeting with the inspector. I'll see you again sometime, Miss Grant. Good night. After Sergeant Preston left barkeep, then she went up to her room. A short time later, Ken came in. What's up, Mimi? That Mountie, Ken. He was here again to talk to me. Well, what about it? He found Jim Belden. That was quick work on the part of the Mountie. Belden in jail? That's just it. He isn't in jail. That Sergeant Preston isn't convinced that Jim killed Wells. Jim must have told the Mountie the story we cooked up when we... Oh, no, no. That fool Belden is still keeping his mouth shut for my sake. He thinks you'll go and clear him. (laughs) That's sure a hot one. I know. The main reason I sent for you, Ken... Because of something that Mountie said without meaning to. Yeah? What? He said Jim was waiting at his cabin. And that he had something that would definitely prove who the real killer is. But... But what could Belden have? I'm sure he couldn't have found anything of mine in that room. And that's something you can't be too sure about, Ken. The only thing to do is to try to find out what it is the Mountie was talking about. How can I do that? Well, listen, Sergeant Preston has a meeting on at headquarters. He just left here to go there. Meantime, Jim Belden is waiting at Preston's cabin out on the edge of town. This is your chance to go out and see him, Ken. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. Tell him you're going to help him and that we want to talk to him. You mean you want me to bring him back here? Oh, don't be a fool. Once you get him to leave that cabin of Preston's, 
I don't care what you do. Yeah. You can leave it to me. We won't have anything to worry about after tonight. Belden sat waiting in his favorite spot near the fireplace. Suddenly, Ken was startled by a knock at the door. All right. Hello, Jim. Ken. I found out you were here and came right over. I'm sure glad you're here. Come in a minute. Quiet, King. Quiet, boy. This is a friend. How did you know I was waiting here? That Monty Preston told Mamie. Oh, I see. And look, uh, get your things on and come over to the cafe to talk to Mamie and me. We'll get things straightened out tonight. But I promised to wait here for the Monty. Oh, he he's over at the cafe now. We'll tell him the whole story. Well, all right. I'm sorry you didn't tell him about Joe Wells before, Ken. You shouldn't have taken the law into your own hands like that. He deserved what he got. Let's get going. All right, I'll get my parka. I, I was afraid Mamie had changed toward me. She acted strange when I talked to her. Oh, Mamie was worried about both of us. She didn't know just what to do. Yeah, the poor girl, I guess she was under a strain at that. She sure was. Well, you have to stay here, King, and wait for Sergeant Preston. Lie down, fella. Hurry up, Jim. All right, I'm ready. Stay there, King. We'll take the shortcut along the ravine, Jim. The sooner we get there, the better. All right, let's go. The two men walked along the narrow trail that bordered a deep ravine on the edge of town. Gosh, I feel better already. You know, Ken, I, I'm glad you came for me like you did. You tell about you following Wells to Whitehorse. Oh, then Preston has no idea about it. Nope. I did tell him I didn't kill Wells, but I wouldn't tell him anything else for Mamie's sake. Jim, what was it you found in that hotel room? Something I dropped? What do you mean? Stop stalling. Preston told Mamie you had something at the cabin with you that would prove... I don't know what he could have meant by that. Let's get moving. No, wait. Hey. Oh, hey, what's that for, Ken? Why do you pull a gun on me? You old trust and fool. Mamie doesn't care a rap about you. You came in handy, that's all. I can't believe that until we talk to him. Yes, I. But I thought you, you were thought gonna... I was fool enough to clear you at my own expense, eh? Preston was right, Jim. Joe Wells never killed anybody. Then... Then you did follow and kill him for his gold. Now you're waking up. Well, you won't have a chance of getting away with it. Sergeant Preston... Preston and a... everyone else will think you got cold feet and cleared out when they can't find you. What do you mean? I mean I'm putting a bullet in you and tossing you I... in the ravine. What? When the thaw comes, the water down there will carry your body away from... Told about and you. And you won't get the chance. This is it, Belden. As Sergeant Preston shouted, Ken Grant turned momentarily. His hesitation was just long enough for King to spring forward like a streak of lightning. Oh! With a throaty growl, King grabbed Gam's gun arm before he could pull the trigger. Oh, take him off! My arm! Take him off! Sergeant Preston, you and King got here just in time. Ken was going to kill me. I know, Jim. I was waiting near the cabin when he went there. Mamie. Mamie said you were going to a meeting. That's what she thought. I told her Jim had something at the cabin that would prove you killed Joe Wells. I was talking about King. You you can't prove that. I don't know anything about Joe Wells' murder. I'll get the truth before long. Right now, I'm taking you in for the attempted murder of Jim Belden. After we leave you at headquarters, Jim and I have a call to make at the cafe. All right, let's get going. Later that evening, Mamie Grant was waiting in her room for Ken to return. Finally, she heard steps in the hallway outside and looked up expectantly as the door opened. Hello, Mamie. You? Oh, didn't Ken go to that cabin? Yes, he went there, Miss Grant. Come in, King. Marty in the door. You seem surprised to see us. Why did you come here with Jim Belden? Where's my brother? You mean you aren't glad to see me, honey? Oh, don't honey me, you fool. I want to know where There you... are a few things we want to know, too, Miss Grant. Your version of the Joe Wells affair, for one. I don't... That's all I do know. That's a lie, and you know it. Of course she knows it's a lie. Miss Grant... Your brother, Ken, is at headquarters right now. At, at headquarters? Then you've arrested him? That's right. And I'm taking you there, too, for playing a part in the murder and robbery of Joe Wells. You can't prove any such thing. It's just Jim Belden's word against mine. No, you're wrong. You'll have two against you. Jim Belden and your brother. You, you mean Ken talked? He's a fool. I should have known he'd mess things up. Oh, but listen... He planned everything. Getting Jim into it was Ken's own idea. He killed Wells alone. I, I was still here in Dawson singing every night. You were an accessory before the fact, and you also planned with Ken to do away with Belden. 
I'm taking you to headquarters right now. Oh, no. The table drawer, King sprang instantly, knocking her to the floor and knocking the gun from her hand. Oh, get King, away. on, fella, get on. Get him away. Get up, Miss Grant. You're not hurt. Oh, Jim. Jim, don't let him take me to prison. It, it was all Ken's fault. Oh, please, Jim, for my sake, do something. For your sake, I made a fool of myself, Mamie. I'm through being a fool now, though. You helped Ken plan Wells' murder, and you even helped him plan mine. Well, thank heaven Sergeant Preston will see to it you don't make a fool out of any other man. Oh, Jim. Jim, how can you talk to me that way? Even King recognizes crocodile tears when he sees them. King is Why, a wonderful you... dog. He saved my life, Sergeant. I hate that dog as much as I hate you, Jim Belden. You'll have a long time to think about King and Jim Belden in prison, Miss Grant. But I'm sure both of them will soon forget you. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Ask Mother, she knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why quick... What's more, Mother likes the fact that Weeder Rice Shot from Guns makes an easy-to-fix, thrifty, deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. For added health benefits, natural great amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant that you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure King Proves His Worth. Dora Craig didn't like King. She was afraid of all dogs when she came to the Yukon to visit her father. And her little boy was lost in the wilderness, and Dora learned of terrors greater than she'd ever imagined. And she learned that it took a dog like King to fight those terrors. It was a mighty exciting and dangerous trail when King and I went in search of the lost boy. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.